Welcome to Sports from the Couch. I gotta say, it's the stupidest thing in sports. With your host, Mike Mercado. Players cannot stand them. Coaches cannot stand them. Most importantly, the fans can't stand them. Brought to you by Mercado Airways. I'm gonna say it once and hopefully I'm wrong, but it's a disaster waiting to happen. That is so bad, that is absolutely brutal. Hello and welcome into another edition of Sportsman on the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. It is January 25th, 2021 in the snowy city of Chicago. We have ourselves a Super Bowl matchup. It was a very interesting, eventful championship Sunday in the NFL. And we need to talk about it. But before we get to all that, let's take care of some housekeeping notes. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike at Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and the show's on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Like, rate, review, and shares wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Become a producer of the network at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home tour interviews with athletes and celebrities that you could get ad free. And before anybody else, that's patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Check out our swag at teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have a new event going on, Merc Out Cancer. Proceeds are going to cancer foundations and cancer survivors. That's teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Come play video games with us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And if you would like to keep up to date with everything we're doing on the network, from the True Crime Show, the Pop Culture Show, and all the interviews, follow us on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Toss to Godwin. He's got the first down, and this game's over. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady are going to Super Bowl 55. Super Bowl 55 in Tampa, Florida. The new home of the greatest to ever do it. He's going to his 10th Super Bowl. And Bruce Arians will be a head coach for the first time in a Super Bowl. He won as an offensive coordinator with the Steelers. What a job pulling this all together. Andy Reid, you've got a chance now to go get a second ring and go back to back yourself. All you got to do is go through the greatest of all time standing on the other side. <laughs> that was the thing, right? The Packers, you get your home playoff game. Guess what? Oh, just standing in front of you is Tom Brady. It's like, oh, of all the times. But they got Patrick Mahomes, and he is amazing, and he will take a back seat. To very few people, I can tell you that. Kansas City has a date now. February 7th with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Super Bowl matchup is all set. All righty, friends. We have ourselves a Super Bowl matchup as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Green Bay Packers 31 to 26, winning the NFC and now being the first team ever to play a Super Bowl in their home stadium. And they will be taking on the Kansas City Chiefs who beat the Buffalo Bills 38 to 24, winning their second consecutive AFC championship, going back to the Super Bowl to defend their Super Bowl championship. And it is going to be one hell of a matchup between Tom Brady and his Buccaneers against Patrick Mahomes and his Kansas City Chiefs. So this is where I want to start off with. I guess the big thing, the overarching story. Two weeks we know for a fact that the story is going to be about Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. And it deservingly so. We have arguably the goats against baby goats. But there is a lot of things that kind of happen this championship Sunday that I really think we need to talk about in a fan-to-fan talk, in a novice spectator type of way. Because, you know, you go on ESPN and they're going to give you the stats and the details, whether it's on CBS, Yahoo, ESPN, your favorite radio show, whatever it is. But philosophically speaking, as we're talking about it, you know that's what I like to do here on Sports Front of Couch. And the one thing that I just... We kept seeing over and over again this entire weekend when it came to Championship Sunday were teams not being aggressive enough. And look, I understand that's easy for us to say. 
because we've been playing Madden our entire life, fantasy football, and you know, there is nothing that you can't do, and why wouldn't you go for more points? You know, eight equals more than seven, seven's more than three, so on and so forth. But you have to even look beyond that. You can't try to be the smartest man in the room and then not see something so obvious, which is when you're playing a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, you got to score touchdowns. Field goals aren't good enough. You know, field goals are good enough in week six of a regular season. Week 13 in a regular season. Not in a conference championship game. And you saw it in the Packers-Tampa Bay game. Now, look at that game in its own. Aaron Rodgers, who rightfully so, gets put on this pedestal. But when Tom Brady is giving your offense the ball three different times, because he's throwing it right at hands of the secondary, then you have to convert. And you have to score points. Because that's the difference between Aaron Rodgers going to a Super Bowl and him now in a post-game conference talking about whether or not he's going to be back and the changes this team is going to have to go through. You have to be able to be dangerous as an offense. Look, at defense wins championships, that, that old adage, right? And part of it may be true on any given Sunday. But in a moment when you need to win a game, when you need something special to happen, you need to rely on the people who got you there or the people who can get you there. And too many times we don't see that in the NFL. We don't see that in most professions when the higher ups don't want to get out of the comfort zone. And look at the Malifor thing is interesting because you still needed to get a field good at some point. You needed a touchdown at some point. Like I understand that it's a little bit more an argument when it comes to mathematics of his decision. But the point remains, you need to score. You need to put points up when you're this deep into the season. No longer are you going to be able to be conservative and just give the ball to Derrick Henry and hope that you kill enough time off the clock. That's not going to win you championships. That's not going to get you to the Super Bowl. That's not going to let you beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Tampa Bay, to me, may have been the most confusing team throughout the entire regular season but as soon as the bracket came out and we saw how things were falling into place I felt the toughest game for Tampa Bay was going to be that Washington game and it sort of was in a way even though this Green Bay game was exciting and it could have come down to a lot of different moments that could have turned the entire tide and we'd be having a different conversation but per man on that roster on paper They were as dangerous as anybody. And we saw the conditions at Lambeau Field. It was cold. Of course it's cold. It's January. But this wasn't an inexperienced leader, quarterback, taking his team to Lambeau Field. This was Tom Brady. I could have understand the argument of almost any other veteran quarterback who could be just as good as Tom Brady going to a team like Tampa and then going to Lambeau Field. But this is a guy who's been coached under Bill Belichick, has played in Foxborough. They know a little bit of something as well about snow. I know us here in the Midwest and Chicago, we like to pride ourselves and think we're the only ones that get snow. But he's been in it. And all these guys have played enough football where they've experienced it. And when you're on that level and things are rolling, all of a sudden it's not as cold as your body maybe thinks it is, you know? Like, the mind is a tricky thing. So when you're rolling on all cylinders, you don't mind that that hit that would have hit an extra little bit harder, that stings a little bit more in 20-degree weather, doesn't hurt as much because you know you have a chance to get to the Super Bowl, and this guy is going to lead you there. And the fact that it was Tom Brady, I think that's, obviously we know how great he is. The, the, all the conference championships, all the Super Bowls, the, the, he's the GOAT, right? But to really... Put into perspective where every time they had the ball, you could tell they thought they could do something special because that's what he believes. He may not be the best quarterback in the league anymore. Hell, Tom Brady may never have been the best quote unquote quarterback in the league any given year. You know, and and, and you understand the nuance of that. But you believe that you could win anytime that man has the ball, even at 43 years old. And that's what it felt with this Tampa Bay team. 
it felt like once they got onto a roll and they knew they could win some games, they've been on the road, they knew that this guy was not going to let them down, Bruce Arians trusted him, and guys performed. This is the big thing, too. It wasn't just Tom. Look, he gave up three interceptions. But, like, that's what the point was, is you look at in the roster from Chris Godwin to Mike Evans, Fournette, to Ronald Jones, Cameron Braid, O.J. Howard when he was playing, Rob Gronkowski, Scotty Miller, like, they have ballers. Antonio Brown, when he's healthy, the defense came up big. Jason Pierre-Paul, right, like, he came up huge. That's secondary. They got they had their guys who either were hurt in the beginning of the year and that secondary come back and be impactful players. The point is, all their guys played at their highest level and they believed in one one they believed in what they were doing. They felt like a well-oiled machine going down the field as if they knew that they were going to score or that they were going to get a stop when they needed to. And I think a lot of that has to do with that little extra belief because talent-wise, Green Bay's a really good team as well. But you saw the specialty come out from Tampa Bay. And that's why I really like their team. Now, on the Buffalo AFC, in the AFC side, I think a lot of it, the moment might have been too big. Kansas City is just too good. Josh Allen made some bad mistakes. Buffalo's not going anywhere anytime soon. It'll be interesting to see if the Dolphins find a way to get Deshaun Watson, if the Jets find a way to get Deshaun Watson. What happens if Matthew Stafford ends up in Boston with... Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. But if you're a Buffalo fan, again, it's the Sean McDermott effect of you got to score touchdowns. And if you you don't play special football on that given night against Kansas City right now in this time in history, you're not going to beat them. You spotted They spotted you nine points and you knew that that wasn't enough. Everybody knew that was going to end badly. So... There's not. I, I don't think there's as much juiciness in the AFC game. I thought we pretty much saw where it was going to come up. It would have had been this Herculean effort for Buffalo to have beaten Kansas City, and we've seen a lot of AFC teams in recent years. That one team that goes against the establishment, that makes a run, that had that great offense entire season just come up a little short because it's hard to beat the established team that's been there. That is somewhat healthy. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes... Messed up neck and turf toe and dude was balling. And you talk about just talent from Travis Kelsey and, and Mar- Markel Holdman and, and Hardman and uh, and Tyreek Hill. And you know, there's, they're stacked. So at no point in this Super Bowl are we not just, you know, all the talent. All of it is just there. It's just a big goodie bag. And I think that's what... Won out this past weekend. It's just that the more talented teams who were also kind of healthy for football teams this deep in the playoffs won and balled out. And the most frustrating thing is you could see how far the Bears are from this. Look, and I get football math. The Bears get their asses kicked by Green Bay Packers the entire season for the last few years, but they find a way to beat Tom Brady. Look, in. I don't know what to tell you. The Raiders beat the Chiefs. Football is crazy. We talk about it all the time. But we you just can see it. The Bears aren't on this this level. Mitch Trubisky or whoever they have right now on their roster can't do what Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady did. And Lord knows there's not a bunch, anybody, many people who can. But in this weekend alone, we saw four guys that are top tier. There's another five that are top tier so you could go get your guy it's not impossible but man as a Bears fan that was frustrating that was frustrating to see because you just know that it feels a lifetime away from being on that stage on that level to try to win your own damn trophy oh that that must be frustrating but it's going to be a fun few weeks storylines are going to be very interesting. We know it's going to be Brady. It's going to be Mahomes. That's what everybody's going to talk about. But I feel like there's there's a lot of other things that we could have broken down here from just the philosophy of you got to be aggressive. You got to score with these guys who are so talented, with quarterbacks that are top tier. You got to put points on the board. And when you're a team like Buffalo who you're just not as good, you got to take advantage of every moment. And if you're 
the Packers, you don't know how long you have Aaron Rodgers. And you know he's the MVP of the season, one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. You ride with him, and you let him. You put it on his shoulders. So I think that's what we learned. But in the Super Bowl, there's no more excuses. It's just one last game, and it's two, I guess, Hall of Famers for sure and Brady. Mahomes is probably a Hall of Famer already, knowing how crazy the NFL is, but it's going to be a fun matchup. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kansas City Chiefs, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and we have... Two weeks to break it all down for Super Bowl 55. But let us know your thoughts. What did you think about Super Bowl matchups being made as the conference championship, championship Sunday, gave us our participants? Let me know your thoughts. I'm on Twitter at Mike and Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and the show is on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. That'll do it for us on this edition of Sports on the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Don't forget, you can follow us all over the universe. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike at Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and the show's on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Like, rate, review, and shares wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. Become a producer of the network at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home tour interviews with athletes and celebrities that you can get ad-free. And before anybody else, that's patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Check out our swag at teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have a new event going on, Merc Out Cancer. Proceeds are going to Cancer foundations and cancer survivors that's teespring.com slash mercado airwaves like us on facebook at mercado airwaves subscribe to us on youtube youtube.com slash mercado airwaves network come play video games with us on twitch twitch.tv slash mercado airwaves network and if you would like to keep up to date with everything we're doing on the network from the true crime show the pop culture show and all the interviews follow us on twitter at mercado airwaves enjoy all the games take care of yourself Take care of each other. We will see you next time here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado.